Uh, escalating food prices continue to rock the budget in Ghanaian homes, and the trend doesn't seem to be easing anytime soon. At the Makola market, oil and rice prices have doubled such that mothers are adjusting the menu ahead of Christmas festivities to accommodate their diminishing incomes. I can't, I, I can't see uh, a joyous Christmas coming at all. A mother of six is dazed by the raising prices of groceries at the Makala market. She came from Pokwase to get some items for her home, but realized her budget of a thousand cities could only buy a few items off her list. She's upset and vents her frustration. I got closer so I could listen to her. <laughs> The prices are now double double. It is not good. Where is the Kayaye? Bring the items. I came with thousand CDs, but I've only bought tomatoes, pepsodent. This pepsodent was eight CDs last week. Now it is 16 CDs. Why? Tomatoes used to be 20 CDs, but now it is 60 CDs. The mother of six had to get cooking oil, but her preferred size was unavailable. Her gloomy mood worsened. According to her, the oil vendor said the price of the next consignment has already been increased even before it arrives in the shop. So Bernice will have to increase her cooking oil budget on her next market trip. When was the last time I was at market? Last week, me ba, me ba has the last week. Last week, I was here to get rice and oil. The sachet oil was 22 CDs, but today. She tells me it is now 45 CDs. Look at what is remaining of the thousand CDs I came with. One, two, three, four. I need oil. I hope it will be sufficient. Otherwise, I will go home. One, two, three, four. Me bepe oil lato. Inti minim se menye bimpoa. Menye ana miko fiye sa. Christmas is about eight weeks away, but Bernard says. Banku may replace the usual rice meals if the prices on the market do not fall. Now, rice is expensive, so I am very angry. As for this Christmas, unless Akufadu and Baumia do something about the prices, we will eat Banku and Pepe until things get better. Wow. I bumped into Mabel Mensa, a 46-year-old single mother who is at her wit's end. She was yelling at the traders to cut down their prices. Mabel is also a trader and so understands that fuel and the depreciation of the city have forced prices to rise. But she believes traders are taking advantage of the current economic woes. She explained that her budget for her groceries had tripled, especially oil and rice. <laughs> I used to buy a small bottle of oil for 70 Ghana cities, but now it is 270 Ghana cities. What the shop owners are doing is not good. Even if it is the dollar, you will not increase the price over 200 Ghana cities. 
Why? And then the Ghana, I had two, uh, what do you call, 250 cities. Are they? Just, uh, I'm working to say. Are they? Well, this year, food inflation is up by close to three falls from 13.7% at the beginning of the year to 37.8% in September, mainly because Ghana's economy is import driven. The Makala market is no exception. Both imported and local products have been bitten by the inflation bag. But is it the case that traders may be modifying the prices? Cooking oil trader Irene lays the blame squarely at the doors of importers. The consumer thinks we are the cause. No. It is not we who are selling. Who, are who the should cause? we blame then? I buy from an importer. Okay. Okay. So the importer brings me price. I can't sell below the importer's price. It means that I'm not in business. Right now, we are selling to replace stock, not to make profit. Okay. Do you understand? We are selling to replace stock, not to make profit. It's a big challenge and pathetic because you don't know what the future holds for us at all. I can't, I, I can't see a, a joyous Christmas coming at all unless something is done. Her colleague Victoria claims she hadn't increased her prices for a month because of her customers. But then the prices keep soaring. Victoria quotes her prices to us. But uh, four months ago, na angwa galono, eh four fifty. Say say no, eh ten galon we no. Wait, nine fifty. Uh, uh, 950. The gallon of oil now cost 950. This was 220, but now 400. We are told it's the dollar. Everyone says dollar. Tomatoes is dollar. Okro is dollar. Contomere is dollar. They need to fix it. And those say dollar. Meko say dollar. Jene say dollar. Enkuma say dollar. Contomere po say dollar. Entomun she say dollar no. Joyce Boche came from Suhum in the eastern region to buy rice for her shop. But after a two hour trip to Accra, she had to return because prices had gone up. I came to buy rice, but the price is high. Last week, the type I bought was 520 cities, but it has changed. I don't have a choice. I have to go back. I even went to Agbogloshi to buy meat, but it was a similar situation. The prices are up, so I couldn't buy. The mother of five says even in Suhum, living standards have soared. The cost of living is too high. Life is not easy. Two of my children are on their way to the university. The cost of living is high. If I should take a loan, how will I pay? Even for a working woman like me, it is not easy. So imagine those without work. How will they survive? Government must do something. We are hoping that getting by Christmas, Things will change. Martin manages Elike trading with her sister. For 10 years, they've been retailing rice, sugar and oil. Their shop arguably pegs prices at a reasonable level. But they have also been compelled to increase their prices. Martin says some of their customers no longer come to the shop. Things are difficult these days, even for retailers, because if your customers cannot afford your goods, how would the business grow? Our prices range between 350 and 600 per bag of rice. It will be 560.
it will be 600. I say 600. At present, 600. Only 600. But the people change, sir. Madam, I heard there. At that 12, I heard my name. Or whatever. You know the now, the rising cost of flour and cooking oil is taking a heavy toll on traders in the bakery and fries business. Price of buffalo, popularly known as buffroat and fried yam, are increasing at a major production hub in the Ashanti region. Traders at Amian Quanta say they risk losing their businesses if prices are not increased to correspond to hike in production ingredients. Then I Jima visited the area and filed this report. Buffroat is made of flour, sugar, and other ingredients, which is fried in hot oil under high temperature. The tasty delicacy is often taken with a beverage in the morning, but some prefer taking it as snack in the afternoon. The business is the mainstay of the Amyang Quanta economy. Travelers make a stop at a busy junction to have a taste of the brown balls. This business was in existence before we were born. This is vegetable oil, almost doubled in the past few days, currently selling at 1,000 cities a gallon from a little below 600 cities. With inflation hovering at 37.2% in September, food prices have soared. For about a week, the busy stop at Anyangkwanta has lost its main feature, both fruit hawking. Local stoves, which are production units at the time of our visit, were desolate. According to traders, the hike in price of cooking oil pushed them out of the business. A gallon of oil is now sold at a thousand Ghana cities, but the ingredients for both foods is less than thousand cities. So we realized we had to put a halt to making both foods. For this reason, the traders have resolved to hike the prices from three to five cities, with the smallest balls going for three cities. They are uncertain about survival of the business. You have one five cities. I need three cities. They are traveling. They say eight. What say? Two, two, two cities. I need three cities. From today, the three city buffers will be sold at five Ghana cities, while we sell the two city buffers at three Ghana cities. Meanwhile, the yam frying business, which is an alternative for many here, is also in recession. The traders plan to increase the prices to five cities for three pieces. Adra Ampoma is leader. Unlike the price of oil, the yam prices are stable, so we have decided to sell three pieces of yam at five Ghana cities. It is unclear how the market will respond to the increment. There are concerns the annual quanta buffet may go into extinction if the city depreciation, which is said to be the cause of the price hikes, remain unchecked. For Joy News, Nana Yaojima and Yang Kwanta. Let's still stay with price of food because the Ministry of Food and Agriculture is expected to, as part of measures, arrest the increase in price of food farm produce, facilitate the transportation of food from the farm gate to urban centers and Accra, now speaking to farmers and input dealers at Sefi, we also in the Western North region, the sector minister also Efri Yakoto argued that the move will bring what he calls a bumper harvest closer to urban consumer to make prices competitive. The Sefiriosu area of the Western North region is touted as a life skill planting growing community aside cocoa. After engaging the farmers on the tour, Sector Minister Ousu Efri Yakuto says the ministry will now be directly involved in the purchasing and supply to consumers and the special program aimed at price stabilization. 
eh duane bo a won kra no enye ketoa if you say mumu ba ko kasa no say free eh body e free e fuom e de ba say we also akra no e bedru ha se na ne bo no abo ho mienu miensa nti wudi twa mu akon kra da de se abo ho be edu e na san so na AC, the one more one can you say? At the end of the day, the The price of food in Accra is so high. One of you said the price of planting from the farm gate to Sehiyosu here increases about threefold. How about when they are taken to Accra? That can increase by tenfold. So those in Accra think there is no food, but there is a lot of food around, as you know. We only have to ensure that we get the price reduced for the people in Accra. So the ministry from next week will transport food to the ministry to sell to the people there. Minister of Food and Agriculture. Now I better now we who say Western North for the new feeding crop for them. The minister pledged government continuous support to deal with the issue. We can't hear from her now. We can't be able to face her. And so I'm not going to share no. We better manage better more. Now we must make sure we see a cost no. We share more bosses. We better have more. All that you have told us about what the ministry can do to enhance your work, we will do it. I am promising you that we will do that for you. I want to applaud you for the incredible work you've done here in the Western North. Who said, we are your war region, Hano, a Kosopa, a Kosopa, a Boma Basso, so some of you are a Juma, a Juma, a Juma, some of these food growers explained what more must be done to elevate food growing in the region. Uh, to other stories, new prices of fuel will shortly take effect at the pumps as a letter of petrol is expected to be sold at 17 cities at some filling stations. The oil marketing companies are attributing the unstable and escalating prices to the depreciation of the city against the dollar. This comes barely 48 hours after the government had announced plans of securing cheaper fuel. Here is chairman of the oil marketing companies, Kweku Ajimandria, announcing the new prices. There will be an increase, there will be an increase in the next pricing yes, window. Yes, 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 yes. Because of the duration of our TV versus the dollar. For petrol, we're expecting uh, 17, 17. Uh, Passing 17 CD a letter for the lowest oh, yes. Oh, for, yes. for the for the lowest um, side of the, the lowest of, side. of the spectrum. Yes. Remember, over over a period, we have really the issues have been piling up. There's no window. We have to really get into it. So um, we'll take a quick break here on News Desk. We'll be back with more. Stay with us. Welcome back from that break. Now, fa the fast pace at which price of food items are shooting up is taking a toll on colleges of education around the country as they are unable to feed teacher trainees. Principals of the colleges say the situation has been compounded by the inability of the government to increase feeding grants to the schools. Joy News has cited a letter by the principals to the education ministry. My colleague Joseph Akable has a copy and joins me with details. Joseph, what, what does the letter say? So the letter that we've seen from uh, the colleges of education, it is dated October 31, and it indicates that uh, they are asking approval from the Ministry of Education to allow the principals of these colleges to let the students to fend for themselves starting on November 7. It says that they have been 
trying really hard to feed the pennies in recent times, but the current market trends makes this very difficult. It continues that because prices of food items have been escalating and food supplies have refused to supply them, especially because of their schools' indebtedness to them, and that a request for an upward review of the feeding grant has not been approved, uh, making it difficult to provide three meals a day for the trainees. Uh, currently, we are told that they need 60 to 50 pesos to feed a student three times a day, which they say is not enough. So that is the request that they are making to the Ministry of Education. Mm. So the request is for the student to fend for themselves? Yes, that is the request they are making to the Ministry of Health, uh, the Ministry of Education, that the Ministry grants them approval to allow uh, the students to feed themselves. That is in the event that they will not be able to first make the indebtedness that is money available for them to clear the indebtedness mm. to the suppliers or adjust upward the amount that they receive currently to feed their students, which is just a little over 60, uh, 60 and 50 pesos. All right. Uh, so that's my colleague uh, Joseph Akaple there. Now, the National Service Secretariat has introduced a new module in a bid to tackle the current unemployment situation in the country. The Executive Director of the National Service Scheme, Mr. Osei Sibe Entry, indicated there's on a tour to the various validation centers ahead of personnel deployment. In an attempt to curb the unemployment rate, the NSS initiates a novel, a novel development that seeks to establish personnel after service each year. Models that we have introduced. One of such model is accounting aid or business support. With that of the accounting aid or business support, there we are going to all those who were deployed to work on that model, we will give them orientation. And after the orientation, then we will deploy them as to businesses that they have to manage. As of now, we are in collaboration with GEA. We are in collaboration with GEA. And GEA has already advanced some support, financial support, to some of the MSMEs. And we actually want to aid the, the progress of their businesses. So what we are going to do is that we've selected some businesses where we will be grouping them. And after grouping them into five or ten, then we will give them professionals in the area of accounting, in the area of marketing, in the area of ICT, in the area of supply chain, to go and help them. One, first of all, to help them to be able to manage their business and manage it very well. How to help them to use ICT to get out marketing to increase and boost their sales. He also urged national service personnel to avail themselves and work towards being employable by gaining the required experience in their various fields of expertise. You, tomorrow you will be starting your national service. That is tomorrow, 1st November. We urge you on that wherever you go, you go and give off your best. It is one year, and this one year is going to give you opportunity for you to add on. You've gone into the tertiary. There you've been given all the theory, theories that you need to know. It's now about practical. So you go there and you avail yourself. Our prayer is that by the time you are done with the national service, you would have made yourself available to be employable. In that case, you need to perfect your knowledge, perfect by getting a lot of experiences. National service is going to be around anywhere we think we have to come in and fill the gap, we will come. We have introduced a lot of models all in an attempt to make sure that we increase upon the employability prowess of all of you. Now, the family of a man who was hit by a stray bullet, allegedly fired by the police during last month's demonstration by some resident of Wa, wants the Interior Minister to independently investigate the issue. 14 year old Ibrahim Hafiz was returning from the mosque when he was shot in the left shin and rushed to the Upper West Regional Hospital, where the leg was later amputated. Father of, of the victim, Ibrahim Salia Firibu, says they feel neglected. Rafik Salam reports. On September 16, 2022, 14 year old primary sex pupil Ibrahim Hafiz had closed from the mosque for Friday prayers when he bumped into sea of Arab youth demonstrators protesting about the suspected ritual murders of 10 persons 
in the one municipality. The demonstration turned violent after the Irish youth allegedly broke into some stores owned by some West African nationals, forcing the police to fire gun swords to ward them off from the area. Hafiz was caught in the melee and in an attempt to cross the road to safety, he was hit by a stray bullet allegedly fired by the police stationed at the Government Junction. The work Kabanya model primary six pupil was rushed to the Apostle Hospital for medical treatment. The police were firing on shots. When I got to the scene, I tried to cross to the other side. I was gunned down by a stray bullet. I became unconscious and later woke up at the hospital. Medical director of the Upper West Region Hospital, Dr. Robert Amesia, painted a mental picture of the condition that a fees was brought to the facility. Two punctured wounds that communicated to each other. Um, one on, on the anterior part, that's the front, a smaller one. There was another one at the posterior part, which is the back, a bigger one. But during the surgical exploration, we realized that those two wounds were connected. I cannot for certain say it was a bullet, but I'm very sure that it was a measles wound because it's, it's something that communicated. It means that it entered from one end, most probably the front, and exited at the other end. Initially, they thought they could save the leg and mounted an external fixator, but the plan fell through. Uh, unfortunately, we were unable to, and uh, the leg became gangrenous, literally meaning that uh, it died off. So we had to subsequently amputate it below knee. Uh, he has since been in the ward, uh, being cared for the wound that uh, he sustained after the amputation and uh, when the wound heals he's properly rehabilitated so that he can acquire an artificial limb uh, our clinical psychologist has been talking to him because if you have two limbs and you wake up one day and one is not there that is something that is not easy for you to you know accept so the clinical psychologist has also been talking with him at bedside of a feast, eyes close family members, including his parents. They cannot pinpoint exactly as to who fired a gun, but they can say without any equivocation it was fired by the police. We can say he was shot by the police because none of the demonstrators was caught. Surveillance in an area of the police who came to chase them away that way. Police in here to work, and they shot him. I won't run one in short here. So I need a warning shot in here. Pum Kabilin Yoga. The Kura Kobana, an uncle to a fees, is however advocating for an independent committee to investigate on the issue and the persons found culpable be made to face justice. That's what I will want to happen is that it has been far too many in such instances of police using a uh, bullets rough rough so i would like them to actually come in and they investigate it and let us adequately be compensated for this wrong because there are too many of such things happening in the country the responsibility of footing the medical bills has been on the shoulders of the parents a huge drain on their irregular source of income his father ibrahim saleh ferbo is a mason and the mother, Avisa Ibrahim, is a petty trader at the Wadeli market. They have since paid over 5,000 Ghana cities for the medical bills. It is the wish of Hafiz and his father that the former should be supported to acquire an artificial limp and continue with his education. If they could help by giving scholarship package to him to know his education and also help acquire prosthetic legs and his movement. Ever since Afiz was hospitalized leading to the amputation of his leg, he has not gotten a single visit 
from the duty bearers in the region. They felt neglected and left to go through this ordeal alone. The parents of Ibrahim Afis are saying that they would like to know what actually transpired on that fateful day and would like an investigation to be conducted by the interior ministry or the government so that they will know the proof or otherwise of the matter. It is only when the truth is told that they will be at peace with their God. Reporting for Joy News, Rafik Salam. Wa. Back in Accra, I am Samuel Kujibris. We'll take a quick break. When we return, we'll bring you later from the world of business. Stay with us. Hi, welcome to business. My name is Daryl Kwao. There is an urgent call for government and its development partners to actively engage permaculturists and civil society actors in developing permaculture policy frameworks to protect the environment. Permaculture development, according to scientists and experts in integrated development management, will go a long way towards mitigating the devastating effects of climate change, eradicating poverty, and empowering practitioners to increase productivity and economic growth. According to Dr. John Akarab, senior lecturer at the SD Dombo University of Business and Integrated Development Studies and board chairman of the Ghana Permaculture Institute, it is critical that stakeholders pay special attention to the environment. Here's more in this report. The first phase of the project, which completed in 2018, empowered and trained over 4,000 farmers in permaculture and eco-village techniques. Ghana Permaculture Institute. The second phase of the project is expected to benefit an estimated 2,250 smallholder farmers, particularly youth and women in agri. Between now and the next three and a half years, we should have been able to directly assist 2,000, at least 2,250 uh, individuals. And basically what we'll be doing, and we've started already, is about equipping them with the skills that are required to be able to engage in some of these activities that will help them generate income for themselves. And in some situations, we are um, preparing to provide, for example, seeds and seedlings um, for the Moringa especially. For anyone who perhaps would have been here on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the past three days, you would have noticed that we have had series of training sessions for these youth, many of whom are uh, women. And we hope to be doing more, not only in the Tichiman area. Strengthening the permaculture system has the potential to significantly improve the socio-economic livelihoods of many rural poor Ghanaians and assist farmers in producing more food with fewer resources. And so between now and the next three and a half years, we're going to be training the youth, particularly women in uh, handiworks like production of uh, moringa soups, moringa um, oil, um, production of honey, uh, keeping of bees rather, and then any other thing that can help them to be in business such that we'll be able to reduce poverty amongst them and to get them out of the streets and the complaints of there's nothing to do. According to Dr. Aperep, if investment is made in the sector, permaculture will continue to support Ghana's economy by providing employment, food, medicinal crops and plants. Charles Katere is the deputy director at the Ghana Permaculture Institute. Uh, we are targeting four regions that is is uh, Bono East region, Ahafo, Northern region, and then also Upper West region to benefit from this project. And it's, it's a three and a half year project. And then we believe and hope that at the end of the day, we will be able to create more.
market for the farmers, all the products that they are cultivating, mostly uh, moringa plants, because moringa is seen as one of the leading crops in Ghana that has much nutrition and then also medicinal to humanity. Some beneficiary farmers say permaculture reduces farming cost, produces less waste, and contributes to sustainable agriculture. Madam Joyce Kodum cultivates moringa. I'm also Dabwe James. I'm one of the farmers. I've been learning a lot uh, from uh, for the Moringa product and then what is going on here. And I'm, uh, I'm very excited for joining this program. Four farmers each received 1,000 Ghana cities as an award for their dedication and hard work in ensuring the successful implementation of previous projects. A report by Mohamed Nuruddin. The Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, GMPC, has pledged its continuous investment in science and technology, engineering and mathematics STEM education in Ghana. The corporation believes local uh, content and participation in the petroleum sector could be maximized through developing expertise in STEM within the value chain. Chief Executive Opoku Ahwene Dankwa was speaking at the grand finale of the 2022 National Science and Math Quiz in Kumasi. There's more in this report. The government is set to establish five STEM-based universities in the five newly created regions in the country. This move is in line with the policy of expanding and promoting STEM education at all levels. The Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, GNPC, wants corporate bodies to support the policy by investing in STEM education. Opoku Awinye Dankwa is CEO of the GNPC. GNPC, as the national oil company, recognizes the urgent need to maximize local content and local, local participation for the people of Ghana. Inside the National Science and Mass Quiz, it is indeed a good project. And that is why GMPC, Ghana National Petroleum Corporation, has decided to join in by promoting the study of science and mathematics, which is the bedrock of our very existence today. The final contest of the National Science and Mass Quiz was thrilling with the three competing schools giving off their best performance. Presec Legon won the contest with 50 points while Premper College and Adisado College came second and third with 41 and 32 points respectively. Mr. Opoku Awinye Dankwa shared his experience as an NSMQ contestant for Presec in the 1997 competition. I look at these contestants today and it feels like 25 years ago. Or to put it in a better context, about a quarter of a century ago. I was a curious young boy representing Presec, Legon. But that year, it was a good feeling back then. Alongside my teammates, William Tete, Wadada, and Patrick Nujigan Nare. We considered it a privilege rather than a right, and to be up on stage with other schools competing for laurels. Meanwhile, the GNPC is offering five scholarships to five outstanding contestants to study a science-related program in any Ghanaian university. The management of primetime production was lauded for sustaining the NSMQ project for the past 29 years. For Joy News, Anita Sewa Ajugan reporting. And that's it for this segment. The news continues after this break. Welcome back. Time for us to bring you sports. And Lawrence is already in the studio. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Bruce. How are you? I'm good, and you? I'm fine, knowing that uh, Kotoko, you know, did our magic yesterday. It's, uh, it well, it's, it's, a good, it's a good thing. Mm. I'm particularly happy for one guy, Stephen McCullough, okay. after his initial struggles 
in the porcupine sheds. Yesterday seemed to be a good day for him. He scored the first goal, won the penalty for the second, and then he assisted the third goal. So that, mm -hmm. that was a bit of update from the local league. But then today, okay. it's the big trophy, the Champions League. Uh -huh. And then, you know, at this point, if you're a Barca fan, you know where your stand is. And if you are a Mohamed Kudus fan like the whole of Ghana, you know what it means at this stage for so, him. So can you confirm for me? That Basa, are they now joining the Europa? Basa are joining Europa. Oh, like, they, so even if they win today, it won't change anything. It won't change anything. Oh, thank you, thank you. I needed that confirmation yeah. because of Dion. I really wanted them to. Oh, win. yeah, where he said he doesn't want to. Exactly. You know. Now he would have to join us in Europa. So, so there, are, there are quite some interesting fixtures. I know some of the groups have been decided already, but even while the decision has been taken, mm. you, you still feel there's, there are going to be games that will win the hearts of football fans. Okay. I would take. Napoli versus Liverpool, for instance, as as one game to look forward to. You know, cracker. you know the what happened in the in the first leg in Italy. Liverpool went down completely, mm. and then it's the kind of football that Napoli are playing this season that that's winning so many hearts. Uh, is that uh, where Victor Simeon is? Yes. Oh. Over the weekend, he scored, he scored a hat trick. Oh, yeah. So you you definitely expect fireworks from that game. Rangers versus Ayas. Ayas need to win to secure a place in the in the Europa League or grab a draw, should they lose by a three-goal margin, which, which means they will be dropping to fourth and then Rangers will rather take up the Europa League sports because Ayas currently have three points, mm. which, which is not good. So should they lose by three or more, that means they are dropping to fourth. Another game we have to keep an eye on is the game between Inter Milan and then Bayer Munich. Both teams have qualified already, but then it's just a kind of football that will be on display um, that will get in football fans talking about. One group I'm excited to watch, and then I can't wait to um, to find out what the outcome will be. It will be the, um, the the group involving Marseille, Tottenham Hotspur, Sporting Lisbon, and then Entrang Frankfurt. You know, at this point, all four teams can qualify from that group. Oh, really? Yes. That's an interesting so, group. Then. So going into the last round of fixtures in the group, mm -hmm. you want to look at what will be the permutations, what I will need to avoid. Mm -hmm. For for someone like Tottenham, I thought Tottenham could have wrapped up this group a long time ago. But we all know Antonio Conte and then his struggles with European football. Mm -hmm. His midweek is is people say he uses midweek to prepare his team. So when you are playing. A game in midweek, he, he kind of service. Mm. So he, they play Olympic Marseille. Should Olympic Marseille win and then should Sporting win, that means Tottenham are dropping and then Frankfurt are also I'll, dropping. I'll go for Marseille because of uh, Bay. Because of Bay. Uh, Oh, yeah. yeah. And then I think for Arsenal, fans, they don't want to hear it, but because of um, someone like Guendouzi as well, I want Marseille to qualify because, mm. well, yeah. he's, he's been tormenting them with that Champions yeah. League thing and then. Mm. I, I like the I like the way things are going. Barcelona, so you, and, you and I are on the same uh, page here. We're oh yeah, supporting Marseille. Exactly. Okay. Another game that well you, you can't call it useless. It's important, but then for Barca fans, it's like a useless thing. Mm. They are playing Victoria Pleasant. They were good winners or thumping winners on the opening day of the Champions League. Mm. So obviously, another walk in the park for them. Other games include Bayer Leverkusen versus Club Rouge, Porto. As let's go Madrid. Yeah. That also be another cracker. Uh, is, Porto is where our Ghanaian guy is, isn't it? There's, there's no Ghanaian currently at Porto. Oh, then where is my Fatah? Is at Sporting. Oh, Sporting. Yeah, sporting. Oh, okay. All right then. Interesting. Yeah, they're very, very interesting fixtures there. Let's see how it goes. But whatever happens to, uh, to Barcelona, I mean, that's, that, that's. Of course, they are playing the Europa League. Yeah. It, it's, it's United who have to be careful. I think. Why? Barca are noting for you. But have to be careful because of who? You see, when the big guns are dropping into the Europa League, mm -hmm. if you are the United, you are the Arsenal who feel your squad depth is not up there, mm -hmm. you, you begin to fear because Barca have the squad depth. Atletico Madrid are another team that... And then you talk about the good old Sevilla. Mm -hmm. when, even when you put them into a Champions League group where they are expected to qualify, they will still drop to the Europa League and come and cause trouble. Well, you know what they did to you some years ago, mm -hmm. right? Well, but this year means that the Europa League is now becoming the Champions League. So let's see how it goes. Yeah. So, so, no, so you feel you are, you are playing the big teams? Oh, exactly. Yes. But why? All the big teams are coming to the Europa League. <laughs> that's where you have to. That's why I, I told you earlier that 
I look forward to Thursday than Tuesdays and Wednesdays. Really? really? What, what football is that? Well, my only excitement I would take is the fact that Mohamed Kudus could probably make more exploits in the European League when he joins the Europa League. So, yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see how that goes. Sure. Well, thank you sure. very much for that one. And that's uh, the spot for you on the bulletin. That's how we wrap up today's bulletin. There's more news on myjoyonline.com. My name is Samuel Kojo. Brace to enjoy the rest of our shows. Good morning. <laughs>